Hey book huggers, this is Jen, and let's talk about what I read in October. Yeah, last month. So I recently watched a video, I think it was Mercedes at Mercedes Bookish Musings, and she started doing her monthly wrap-ups from lowest ratings to highest ratings, and I really kind of liked how that worked out, so I think I'm going to do that this time. I read 10 books in October, and I have to tell you it was kind of a struggle to get to those 10 books. I was kind of slumpy all month, and it wasn't because I started rewatching The West Wing, because I had to actually put a stop to that because I get so obsessive about The West Wing that I was not sleeping. So I had to stop that and I guess save it for a time when I'm on vacation and don't have to sleep. There were all these books I wanted to read and I kept starting books and then thinking I had to read other books and just, I don't know. I don't know what happened. And I, I started a lot of books that I didn't really like or didn't really like for me at this time. So yeah, it was an interesting month. But 10 books, it's not bad. And I am going to start with my lowest Goodreads ratings and go up to my highest ratings. So I'm going to start with The Hero, book one by David Rubin. It's a graphic novel, it's Greek mythology, it's all about the twelve labors of Heracles and the relationship between Heracles and Eurystheus and, you know, Hera wanting Eurystheus to beat Heracles and anyway, that whole situation. It's all stuff that I should really, really like. It's mythology, which I enjoy. Um, it has some really kind of interesting anachronistic things in it. So it's clearly set in ancient mythological times, but there's there are cell phones. There's like a um, celebrity culture um, reality show sort of vibe to it and at one point Eurystheus is playing with these tiny little DC superhero action figures which I thought was really interesting. Um, all things that I should really really love but I did not really really love this. I gave it two stars. I gave two books two stars this month and that for me is kind of serious. I think a lot of it has to do with the art in this book. Color wise it's very bold and I really like that kind of thing, but I think a lot of it is just... I don't know. I don't know. Like this isn't bad. It's not bad, but there's something about it that I just didn't love. I can't even really put my finger on it, but I did. I gave it two stars. Hey guys, I am breaking into this video from the future to let you know that the next book I was going to talk about in my two-star pile was The Wrath and the Dawn by Renée Audier, but I had so many opinions and thoughts and feelings about this book that I think if I left this segment in, this video would be really too long. So I have plucked this part out and I'm going to make it its own review and I'll post it later this week. So stay tuned. Anyway, back to the wrap-up. My next stack is the three star stack and I'm going to start with Apocalyptic Girl, which is a graphic novel. It's by Andrew McLean. It's about a girl named Arya who is on Earth. She's from another planet, but she's on Earth um, after the apocalypse and it's so far after the apocalypse that the Earth is kind of sort of starting to repopulate, has these tribes of people who are attacking each other and um, Basically, it's Arya and the cat, and Arya's mission is to find um, find the MacGuffin, basically, to find the thing. And she's basically been on this on Earth for six years by herself, with only the cat to talk to. And she keeps having these conversations with herself. It's kind of like um, it's kind of like the cat is Wilson the volleyball from Castaway, and it's just it's good. Like, I read it two days ago, and the story hasn't really stuck with me, though, which is why I think I gave it three stars. Um, it wasn't really impactful. Um, I do like the art. We've talked about it before. And I like sort of the comic book feel of how the book was designed as far as paper quality and things like that. I just thought it was okay. My next three-star book is Rejane by Patricia Park. 
and it's a retelling of Jane Eyre, but it's set in like the late 90s, early 2000s in Queens, and it's about a girl named Jane who is half Korean and half American, and she has been orphaned and was sent as a baby to live with her aunt and uncle in Queens and they have a Korean grocery store and it talks a lot about the Korean American community in Queens at that time which is really really interesting and then she grows tired of working at her uncle's grocery store and so she takes a job as a nanny for um, a couple in Brooklyn. The, the wife is a professor and the husband is sort of also a professor but working on his dissertation and their daughter is a girl that they adopted from China. So it's just a really interesting blend of cultures. And then eventually she goes to Seoul, South Korea to stay with her relatives there and you get a look at Korean culture in the early 2000s. And then during that time 9-11 uh, also happens. So you see how that affected her Queen's neighborhood. Um, I gave it three stars because I think in the beginning I was a little frustrated with it because I thought if it's a retelling of Jane Eyre I wanted it to be a closer retelling of Jane Eyre. And I think once I let that go towards the middle of the book um, I started enjoying it a little bit more. I would probably actually give this like a three and a half or three and three quarter star. I especially liked the whole cultural aspect of it and just it just seemed like a really interesting glimpse into a different culture in a different time and so three and a half three quarter stars. And then my last three star book was Willful Machines by Tim Fleury. It's a YA science fiction novel set just a little bit in the future where people have created an artificial intelligence robot that they're trying to get to be as human as possible. And that artificial intelligence entity, whose name is Charlotte, ends up killing um, the people who helped create her and then uploading her consciousness to the internet. And the person that Charlotte killed is the mother of the main character. And you flash forward a bunch of years, and the main character, whose name is Lee, I believe, um, goes to this really ritzy private school called Inverness that his super strict sort of military grandfather runs. And oh, by the way, Lee is the son of the President of the United States, who is this ultra-conservative, like wants to get rid of everything robot, everything AI, everything technology basically, and then he's also conservative in all the other ways that people are conservative in the real world. And so Lee is this sort of retiring, shy sort of teenager who actually likes to tinker around with robots even though he knows he's not supposed to. And all of a sudden Charlotte, or Charlotte's consciousness on the internet, starts making threats um, against Lee and against the president and against the country. So it was a cute story. I would probably give it closer to three and a half or three and three quarters stars. There's a really interesting love story. There's a lot of talk about artificial intelligence and robots and what makes us human. So yeah, cute story. Three and a half stars. Now on to my four star pile. And I actually gave quite a few books four stars this month. I'm going to start with A Portable Shelter by Kirsty Logan. I'm going to make sure you guys can see that since it's so reflective. Kirsty Logan is a Scottish author and this book was actually published by sort of a small press in Scotland and they only published a thousand copies I think. Um, and I ordered it and I talked about it more in my book haul from last month. I ordered it from Amazon UK and it's a book of short stories but it's a really interesting sort of construct, a really interesting way that the stories are set up because it's about two women, Ruth and Liska, and they're about to have a baby and they have promised each other that they are only going to tell the baby the truth, that they're not going to lie to the baby, they're not going to tell the baby any stories. Um, but both of them are storytellers and they keep sneaking around and telling the baby stories. So Ruth is carrying the baby and so she tells the baby stories whenever she wants and then Liska waits until Ruth goes to sleep at night and then tells the stories to the baby. They're, they're very fairy tale-ish and fable-ish and they're set in different time periods, some in modern and some not and um, they're usually set in small villages because Ruth and Liska live in a very small village in a very small house and um, it's just, it's just great. It's a great, great set of short stories. You can see at the top here, maybe you can see, I have these new little post-it tabs, but I didn't get them until I was pretty far into it. 
So don't let that fool you. I, there was much more that I liked in the beginning of it as well. But you can tell there were a lot of things I liked in this book. My favorite stories were Flinch, um, which is about a man who lives in a very small fishing village, but he, he has a secret as to why he can catch so many fish. And he also has a secret love for someone in the village. And my second favorite story was The Mother of Giants, which is this sort of heartbreaking tale of this village where they keep running out of food and um, the mothers and the choices they have to make for their families. And it's just, just heartbreaking, but it's my second favorite. And um, I have many others that I really liked. So I'm excited. I have the rest of Kirstie Logan's books and I'm very excited to read them. So that was four stars, probably more like four and a half, actually. The second was Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. And most of what I remembered about Alice in Wonderland was from the Disney movie. And it is, you know, very different from the book. And I, I was fascinated by how well this book holds up. Like, it's 150 years old, but the humor is still so current. And Alice is still such a sassy little adventurer person. I just, I really, really enjoyed it. I wish they had Through the Looking Glass in this series, but they don't. But Puffin has another edition that's also very pretty, so I think I'm probably going to get that one. Because a lot of the things that I think I remember were from Through the Looking Glass and not Alice in Wonderland, so I'm excited to get that. That was four stars. I did a review video on this one, Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon, and um, you can watch that. I'll link it. I really, really loved it, and I gave it four stars. And I finally read Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, the first book in um, Ransom Riggs series, and I really liked it. I was nervous, I think, because I, and I think I put it off for so long because I thought it was just gonna be so creepy and so weird, but it really isn't. Spoiler, it's not that, well, I didn't think it was that creepy, and again, I'm the biggest scaredy cat in the known world, so I was really excited about it. I think that I am going to read the rest of the series. I probably won't be able to until after January because of um, a committee that I'm on that I have to read a lot for, but I, um, I am really looking forward to reading the rest of the series because it does have some sort of spooky elements, but it also had a lot of heart and it was actually kind of a sweet story, which I was not expecting. So four stars. And then finally, Descender by Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nguyen. I mentioned this in my library haul video. Um, it is a graphic novel and the art is so beautiful that I can't even stand it. I'm sure you can't really tell, but it's on watercolor paper. It's basically watercolor and ink washes and it's just beautiful. It's sci-fi, it's about space, it's set on many different planets. There's a lot of robotics and like robot helpers and robot companions. And um, this little guy, whose name is Tim21, he was created to be a companion bot for a child. And in the beginning, um, this giant robot shows up. Look at him, he's huge. And basically attacks many planets and kills lots of people. And as a response, all there was sort of a purging of all the robots, all the companions, all the helpers, they called it the culling, um, all over the worlds. And while this was going on, 1021 was a mining planet where um, a gas leak occurred. And so the gas leak basically killed everybody on that planet and he was in a sleep state at the time. And so 10 years later he wakes up and all these, this robot culling has been going on all this time. And while 1021 is trying to come to terms with this, on another planet, the man who created 1021 is sort of rounded up one day and he doesn't understand why and they tell him that they have some intelligence that says that the core, like the core code that created the giant robots that killed everyone was also in his smaller robots. And so he doesn't understand why that is, but they think that he does and blah, blah, blah. And then Tim21 is trying to get off the planets and the people that come to rescue him aren't necessarily rescuers. So it's really intense and it's really great and I cannot wait to read more. This was volume one, 10 stars and 
tin as in t-i-n not ten as in t-e-n anyway um i am super excited to read the rest of it so that is my roundup for October. Um, I'm sorry that it's like halfway through November, it feels like, before my October uh, wrap-up was posted. If you knew me in real life, you would know that uh, it's not so odd for me to be late with stuff. True story. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books or what you've thought about them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are having a fantastic November so far. Bookish hugs and kisses, and I will see you next time. Bye! <laughs> it's so reflective-y. So glare -ish.